Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace and mercy as <clears throat> these wonderful leaders and, and the people that are here sang about your blood, your precious blood. We thank you for that. And Father, we're going to talk just a little bit about these things tonight as we listen to some, some of the words of Paul. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, I've got a sermon tonight. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it here at the beginning, but I'll let you just hold on just for a second, guys. This is called <clears throat> No Strings Attached, Galatians chapter 3, 15 to 29. Promises come in all shapes and sizes, and they are often not pure. They often come with attachments. 
things are often added to. <clears throat> I remember that guy, he would, on television, he would talk real fast. And he would give this bottom line, and da, 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 da. you know that, remember that guy did a couple of commercials where he just, he just machine gunned his words, you couldn't even hardly hear what he was saying. <clears throat> Sometimes when you look at something, there's fine print. And you gotta get out an advanced scientific microscope in order to be able to read all the fine print. Or the, I was thinking also about the last time I signed for a house. Now we've got some real estate people and they, they do a wonderful job, <clears throat> but there's so many laws. And you start initialing places, page after page, initial here, initial. I don't know what I'm signing. I mean, it would take you a week to read all that. <clears throat> all the extra thing, you know, if a volcano comes up under your house, you're responsible, whatever. It seems like everything comes with fine print or <clears throat> now they've even come up with some disclaimers. You can't put a product out <clears throat> unless you do some disclaimers. What do we got for us? Show me a, show me, well, here's one right here. Let's see, what does it say? Do not put any person in this washer. <laughs> does anybody, I mean, sometimes my kids would come in from playing in the mud. I'd, I would like to be able to put them in a washer, you know, and just let it. But don't put it, try another one. Just give us another one. Here's one. <laughs> do not use while sleeping. Somebody somewhere said, we ought to warn the people. Do not use your hair dryer while you're sleeping. <clears throat> oh, it gets better. What is this one? I can't read it. Oh, it's one of those little things that has a little blade in it and you open letters with it. You know what I'm talking about? They want you to wear safety goggles while you're opening your mail. <laughs> Let's open the bills, honey. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> we got another one. Oh, this is even better. Wash inside out. Remove child before washing. Before you wash their clothes, take their clothes off of them. <clears throat> now, sometimes you just sit them in the shower and spray them down. You know, they're so... Nasty. And one more. This is the best one. Do not swallow. <clears throat> now look at the picture. Some artist was told, you got to draw this with a hanger in his throat. And they had this picture. <clears throat> Do not swallow a hanger. But in order to be safe, somebody decided they had to add that to it in order so that everybody would be safe. <clears throat> so, those things are kind of fun, but some of the extra things that get added into our lives we, we really don't like. For example, I love the one <clears throat> that says, we don't want to send you one of these. If you call right now, we're going to send you another one absolutely free. What's the next line? Just pay extra shipping. We're going to put it in the same box. The same guy's gonna pick up two and put them in the box, <clears throat> but you're gonna pay extra shipping and handling. And I've always believed that the extra shipping and handling is actually the cost of that other thing. Right. You know, that's probably what it's worth. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, I, I love, anybody buy an eBay? Sometimes you'll look at an eBay and you'll see this good price. It's a great price and you're like, oh man, this is it, I have walked into it. Shipping and handling, $49.95. <laughs> I mean, they, it's like they don't think you have any sense. And they slide that in there, putting something extra in there. <clears throat> Another one, you're seeing a commercial, and this is the new drug. Oh, this will take care of what you've got. But don't take this if, you know, your left arm falls off. And, and you know, it goes through this series of... It may cause death, it may cause your whole family to die, you know, whatever it is. All of these side effects, and you're like, I don't think I, I need that. I don't think I want that. But they've <clears throat> forced it, these extra things, just to come in to make it more difficult. So sometimes there's attachments. Now the Abrahamic promise that we're gonna talk about a little bit, 
that we're going to consider tonight is pure and holy, and it is the linchpin of the plan of God for the ages. There are no strings attached. Now, <clears throat> I thought I'd just read it. I didn't put it in, in the notes, but I thought I'd just read it. I will, uh, <clears throat> God's talking to Abraham. He says, I will, I will indeed bless you and make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sand <clears throat> on the seashore. Your, offering, your offspring will possess their gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because <clears throat> you have obeyed my commandment. And so... Paul is going to talk to us about this because people have come in <clears throat> to, the people, to the converts that he had. They've come in and they've said, oh, you got Jesus all right, but there's some strings attached. You see, you, there's some more stuff you got to do. I mean, Jesus, that's good. That, that's, that's great. But you better have some more. Th and the people are coming in and starting to attach strings. And, that, well, there's some fine print when you got saved. Did you read it? Yeah. Da, 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 da. You got to do all this stuff. <clears throat> so Paul's going Paul's to attack that in, these, in this passage. And so let's look at the nature of the promise. Galatians 3.15. Brothers, <clears throat> I'm using a human illustration. No one sets aside or makes additions to a human covenant that has been ratified. You're not supposed to be able to change a contract unless you're canceling part of somebody's retirement benefits. I, I, I guess you can. Has anybody experienced that? Get a little bit, well, we can't do that anymore. I'm going to get a little bit less. But <clears throat> if you have a contract, you're supposed to keep it. I can imagine that if I borrowed 100 bucks from Paul, I'll pay you back next week, Paul. That's good. Okay. You, you can help me, can't you? Oh, sure. And next week I come back to you and say, here's your 50 bucks. And he goes, yeah, but I loaned you 100. I know, but you know, all I had was 50. I thought well, I'd just change the deal. Let's just make it 50. Does that work for you? You can't change a contract on one side. Right. People try to do it. <clears throat> That's why they end, up, they end up in court. And <clears throat> so you... You can't do that. I've gone and ordered cars in my lifetime, not many, but I've ordered cars, and it came in, and it didn't have on it what was supposed to be on it. Now, are you going to keep that contract? Is that a valid contract? If somebody changes it, well, this is blue. They didn't have any more of the green ones. That's not what I wanted. Or can you imagine getting your windows done in your house? Well, you got 14 windows, or well, I got to make this even. You got, <clears throat> yeah, you have 14 windows, and we had a special buy one, get one free. But we ran out of windows, so we only did 12. Huh. Same price, you know. You can't just change a deal, you can't just change a contract willy nilly. <clears throat> In the Abrahamic promise, you have a contract. Psalms 15, 4. <clears throat> Who despises the one rejected by the Lord, but honors, <clears throat> honors those who fear the Lord, who, keep, who keeps his word, whatever the cost. The Bible tells us God keeps his word, whatever the cost. See, he is... He honors his word above his name. Because if you don't have, if you don't keep your word, you got no name. Amen. Well, you got a name, <clears throat> but we won't mention it. Because you're a cheater if you don't keep your word. God honors those that keep their word. He never changes his deal. When he makes you a deal, it's a deal. You can be guaranteed about it. It's eternal. <clears throat> 3.16. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and his seed. But he does not say to and to seeds, as though referring to many, but referring to one and to your seed, uh, 
who is Christ. Who is the promise? God said to Abraham, I'm going to bless the world through your seed. <clears throat> now, who is he talking about? Paul answers it for us. We don't have to try to figure it out. We don't, we don't have to wonder about it. He says, who is Christ? Who, who guarantees the promise that's given to Abraham? Who guarantees it? God. You've got God's guarantee. How many of you have ever gotten something with a lifetime guarantee? Anybody ever got one of those things? And company went out of business? Who do you call? You know? Call Sam? The guy's out of business. He lives in Puerto Rico. Okay? And it depends. The guarantee, the, the promise, the value of a promise, and the promise he makes is it's guaranteed by the eternal God of all creation, of all there is, is guaranteed. And so, <clears throat> hey, we're sneaking back in and trying to, to, to water it down. Right. And this thing is guaranteed. He said, I'm going to bless you through your seed, who is Christ. It's unbreakable. He doesn't break his promises. It's eternal because He's around forever to guarantee it. And it's unalterable. Galatians 3, 17 and 18, I say this. The law, which came 430 years later, <clears throat> does not revoke a covenant that was previously ratified by God and cancel the promise. You can't come in 430 years later <clears throat> and say, I'm going to add something to the promise of God. I'm going to add something. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. You can't do that. You can't change that contract. That contract was <clears throat> the fact that we would be blessed through Jesus Christ and not the law. <clears throat> it does not revoke something that's previously ratified and cancel the promise. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer from promise. But God granted it to Abraham through promise. This promise was given to Abraham centuries before the law ever came. They didn't, Abraham didn't even know that there was going to be a law. Why in the world would you have to keep the law in order to get saved, to be born again, why would you have to keep the law when Abraham didn't even know there was going to be a law? There was no such thing. Um, James 17 says, every generous act and every perfect gift is come from above, coming down from the Father of lights. Don't you love that term for God? The Father of lights. I always have like that. And with him there is no variation or shadow of turning. Um, there's a song about that years ago, but no variation, no shadow of turning. It has to do with the sundial as the sun changes and the needle moves. So there's no change. It's, you never hear from God, oh, never mind. On the television, the guy used to have that line. He'd be telling all about something that was a problem, and they'd say, oh, that, well, that, that's already, oh, never mind. It's never an oh, never mind for God. Right. It's, never, it's never a change. His promise is not changeable. His promise is not revocable. What he does is he pins his very character on his word. And when he gives you his word, you can take it to the bank. And when the bank's gone, you can take it somewhere else. Because it's his word, and he's given it. And these people coming along trying to say, well, you better do a little more. You better volunteer for the Red Cross. Go ahead and volunteer for the Red Cross. That doesn't have anything to do with the promises of God. Just a good, nice thing to do. But it's not required. <clears throat> and Psalm says he, he honors those Who's their word, uh, that keep their word even to their own hurt. 
He honors those who keep their word even to their own hurt and don't change, Psalms 15, 4. <clears throat> I tell this story to some of my students sometimes. God expects us to keep our word Amen. when you give our word. And I give them an example. And it, they, they have some fun with it. You have some special skills to watch over a baby with a particular handicap. And you have some special skills to watch over that baby. Your experience, you've done it before. Not everybody knows what to do, how to take care of the baby, to keep it from choking or whatever it is. And your friends say, we're going to plan a special night out, get away, have a little celebration for our anniversary. And we wondered if you'd watch the baby for a few hours so we could get away. And you say, I'd be glad to do that. When is that? That's two weeks from Friday. You got it. <clears throat> I'll be there. A week later, Mr. Wright calls. I mean, this is the guy. This is, he's handsome. He's got that six-pack thing, whatever that is. I mean, he's good-looking. He's athletic. He's got good grades. He's courteous. Everything else, it's all right there. And he comes up to you, and you've like always hoped he would. And he says, would you go out with me to this special event? I have a special event, and I want to take someone, and I'd like you to go with me if, if you'd consider it. And you'd say, well, I'd love to. When is it? Two weeks from Friday. Oh, I gave my word. Now what I do? But that's not all. There's more to it. Because not only that, you know that if you don't say yes, he's going to ask Betty. <laughs> you don't like her, but he's going to go with her. All of a sudden now, all the, you gave your word, and it's going to cost you something to keep your word. And they're all, oh, well, uh, <clears throat> Try to get another nurse or, you know, whatever. And I tell them, now, you can go to the people and appeal to them. You can go to them and say, here's what's happened. And they may say, you know what, we were thinking of Friday or Saturday night. Either one's good, we'll go Saturday night, and you can have your date. It might work out. But the Bible says God honors those who keep their word even to their own hurt. Amen. It's part of why he honors us here. Because we... We did some things and made some things right. And we kept our word to, to, that we had given. And we paid some people back. And, and so with God, there is no sh shadow of changing. There's no turning. He doesn't change. And not only is, it, <clears throat> is the nature of his promise unbreakable, eternal, unalterable, it is also purposeful. Galatians 3, 19 to 21. Why then was the law given? What, it was added because of transgressions until the seed, Jesus, to whom the promise was made would come. The law was put into effect through angels by the means of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not for just one person, but God is one. He doesn't need a mediator. <clears throat> Is the law therefore contrary to God's promises? Absolutely not. For if the law had been <clears throat> given, for if a law had been given that was able to give life, then righteousness would certainly be by the law. He's going to give us some more information on that. But he said the law had a purpose. But now he says <clears throat> if a law had been given that was able to give life, then righteousness would certainly be by the law. Now, here's the point. Here's the whole point Paul's trying to make. He's saying, if by keeping the provisions of the law, you could become righteous, why would Jesus have to die? Why, he wouldn't. Just keep the law. If you, if you could do it, if it was possible to do, you could do it. If there was any way to keep Jesus off of Calvary, don't you think God would have thought of it? Right. Right. 
Why would he let this wicked, vicious payment be made for our sin when there was another way to do it? Okay? And so <clears throat> it is. The law is there because it reveals man's utter sinfulness. That's all it's there for. It's not there to get us to righteousness. It's a narrow path. We walk on it. About half of our steps are in the mud. Right. And a half are on the path. Right. It reminds us every day about having to clean up our shoes that we've been off the path. And, <clears throat> but even in the garden, what did Jesus say? What? He said, I I'm going to translate it. I don't really want to do this. This is nasty business. Nevertheless, whatever you will. What he knew that what he was going to do was going to be a terrible, terrible thing to experience the sin of all creation in his being and to pay the price. He knew what it was going to be. But he said, so if there's any other way, get me out of this. But he knew better. And he said, nevertheless, thy will be done. And so he paid the price. And these people that are trying to tell you that something special happens because the, through the law are just adding some strings to Jesus. And you don't need any strings added. You don't need any fine print. All you need is Jesus. Amen. Now let's look at the greatness of the promise. The problem defined. But the scripture has imprisoned everything under, the, under sin's power so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were confined under the law, <clears throat> imprisoned until the coming faith was revealed. I wrote this one time, just a portion of a poem, you're not getting a full one. Um, one day I looked up from my sin, found myself in bondage complete, Desiring to withdraw from the pain, I soon, soon realized there was no retreat. I had built stone walls all around me with window bars made out of my sin. Bad choices had constructed a prison. Poor decisions had locked me in. And <clears throat> Paul is here to say, you were what the law came <clears throat> and showed you that sin had locked you up. Now, I don't know if you've ever struggled with sin in your life. Maybe you're one of those people who never struggled with sin. I don't know who they are. But have you never found, felt bound up by sin Amen. until you were just, uh, just bound up by your thoughts and bitterness and whatever it is? Just, and it just locks you up. And <clears throat> sin imprisons us but we're, we have been freed by faith in the promise of God, Amen. who was Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it says in the 24th verse <clears throat> that there's a tutor revealed. The law then was our guardian until Christ so that we could be justified by faith. This guardian, this tutor was a slave. Uh, the, uh, my, the King James Bible calls it schoolmaster. But he was a slave that was in charge of the child, the rearing of a child from, from the time they were given to the, to the school teacher and then other things that occurred, the training and teaching of the child was done by this slave. And this slave watched over this child, didn't bother the parents, took care of it, and the, and the law watched over us and taught us, and taught us the reality of our sin and our failures. Right. It showed us these things. Um, it was a strict disciplinarian. Now let me tell you what the law is. Be a picture of the law. You get up in the morning, and you look in the mirror, and there's a smudge on your face. Right. What does... The, the mirror is the law. How do you clean your face in the morning? Do you rub it on the mirror? <laughs> is that mirror, you're going to use that mirror to 
rub that smudge off? I mean, what do you do? Uh, are you with me yet? What do you do? You look down and you find the basin. The law revealed, the basin cleansed. Okay? You get down there, and in that basin, there is a fountain. Okay. You with me? There's a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Amen. Now, folks, the law doesn't do us any good. We got to get to the fountain. Amen. And Paul's telling these Galatians, we're going to the fountain. We're jumping in the pool, whatever you want to say it is. That's where forgiveness and cleansing and freedom comes. It doesn't come from the law, but it comes from the fountain. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood. What a wonderful song that is. That gets me every time Craig sings it up here. Yes, sir. There is a fountain filled with blood. Amen. And so there, this promise is a great promise. It's a promise that says, I will do these things. I will give you something to show you who you are. Then I will take care of it. Amen. I will wash you and I will cleanse you. And stop adding strings to it. A lot of people do. Then we find the promise delivered. By faith, Galatians 3, 26, 27. For all of you are sons, spiritual children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ like a garment. It's not talking about water here. It's talking about being immersed in Jesus. You put him on like a garment. You stand before God, and when he looks at you, he sees Christ all around you in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And you're baptized into his body. You're in him and covered forever. And you're in a spiritual union with God. You're together. You're heirs forever. There is no Jew or Greek or slave or free, male or female, you are all one in Christ. No Jew or Greek. I remember when, when I went to school, about 30% of the school was Jewish. Now, they were, the Jewish girls, a lot of fun, be around, lively, happy, good students, jokesters, whatever. Delightful to be around through elementary school, through junior high school. I get to high school and try to ask one of them out. Said, well, you're not going out with that Gentile. Right. You're a married Jewish boy. Right. I mean, they came, went out after elementary school, stood in line at a bus stop, got on a Jewish bus, went to the Jewish school, had Jewish training. Okay. And I, uh, I see these movies about my big Greek wedding, you know, and they got to get a Greek boy or something, you know. I, that's all humor and everything else. But let me tell you something. <clears throat> Paul says there's none of that stuff in here. There's no, there's no differences between Jew and Greek, between slave and free. There's no distinctions. Are there racial distinctions in life? Sure, we look different. Are there social distinctions? Sure, some people are drinking tea. Other people, you know, well, I don't know what they're drinking, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> some people are doing the finer things in life. Um, there's, uh, there's gender distinctions. These are all things God has created. But in Christ, we're all one. Okay? But he says here, <clears throat> this, is not, this is not the case. You are one in Christ. Why in the world would you look down on a Gentile or look down on somebody from this race or look down on this type of a person because they have money and they don't? And You're all one in Christ. Amen. Right. 
And don't, don't tell me you've got to follow your Jewishness when you've come to Christ. Don't try to add the Jewishness back in. I got a phone call from a friend in high school who was Jewish, <clears throat> a wonderful friend uh, in high school, and I, I, he was my buddy. I was an athlete. He was just him, and, and he loved being around me, and I treated him like he was somebody special. And since then, he's always treated me like I was somebody special. Got a chance to bring him in, show him the school. Pastor Tom came in and sat down with us. We talked, we talked Jesus. Amen. We gave him the gospel, loved him. Amen. And I said to my friend, you know, some of my favorite authors are Jewish. And my Savior That's right. was Jewish. Amen. And I thanked him. And I thanked him for it. Did he, did he buy into it? No. But I'm not done with him. Right. I'm praying that if I leave, the trumpet sounds and I'm gone, right. and he figures out I'm gone, that he's going to figure it out. Yes, sir. And he's going to have a chance to get it done. Right. And I may see him again. Uh, <clears throat> but there's no difference. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Not physical heirs, but spiritual heirs by faith. Now, when God says that we are justified by faith, how dare you add works in? How dare you? Look at Jesus and say, it wasn't Enough. I got to put something in the pot. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches it was enough Amen. for everyone, forever. Amen. Cover it all. Amen. And you don't have to add this in it. You don't have to get cleaned up before you can get saved. Right. Are you kidding me? Most of us would be lost. Right. Still. You don't have to get <clears throat> you don't have to get all cleaned up in order to serve. You get saved. I wouldn't hurt you to wash, but you you <laughs> you get saved, you come in here, we'll give you something to do. I mean, if you don't know all the books of the Bible by heart, you can shake somebody's hand. If you've never read the Bible, Debbie does, she does it. <laughs> She's read the Bible. You can shake somebody's hand without being a theologian. You can serve. You don't have to clean yourself up and add something to it. Now, God's going to clean you up. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, resident spirit is within you, and he's going to begin talking to you. And he's going to be knocking those things off. <clears throat> now, God made his plan of salvation simple. Galatians. He made it simple, and you insult him by saying Jesus didn't have to die. My way is just as good as God's way. <clears throat> no, it isn't. And everybody's not going. They're doing their best. They're... This is my way. I'm the creator God. I'm the one who died for your sins. I have made you. I will save you. And <clears throat> in fact... I just kind of wrote it in the end. Um, that it's, in our conclusion, that it's a contract without conditions. There's no fine print. There's no fast talking. There's no strings. There's no bad side effects. It's a new covenant. It's a, it's a deal. And here's the gospel. I just tried to write the gospel out in the simplest terms I could. You're broken by sin. I will fix it. Do you want it? Does that, does that say it? That's what God's saying to you. You're broken by sin. I'll fix it. Do you want it? 
Be broken by sin. We know all about that. I'll fix it. Jesus went to the cross. Do you want it by faith? Yes, I do. It's done. You're in forever. Now, what's, why would somebody want to come back to you and give you information about that? Here's something else you got to do. You better be baptized. You better, take, you better take the Lord's Supper. You better belong to a particular church. Where does it say that? We're just adding stuff in. Okay? Now, uh, my final idea here tonight is this. Paul's very concerned about who the Galatians are listening to. Because somebody's got their ear. A Gilead, who's got your ear? Who are you listening to? Who are you going to get your information from? Are you going to get it from God's Word? From the Holy Spirit as it speaks to your heart through God's Word? Or are you going to get it from Rush Limbaugh? Oh, well, Fox News. Is that where you're going to get it? Oh, there's a guy at work who knows a lot of stuff. He's read a lot of books. Where are you going to get your information? Where are you going to decide about this? Now listen, we've got a pastor in this church who comes up here every week and preaches his heart out. And he has put his life on the line. God has called him and God has warned him that he better watch it because he's decided that God's called him to be a preacher. Amen. And God said, I'll call you to be a preacher and you better be careful how you treat my people. And he stood up here for years and taught us these things, walked among us, done the right things, proved himself, paid the price, and he stands up here and preaches his heart out, and we go, oh, I don't know. God has given you someone to teach you God's word. Listen to him. And somebody else is talking in your ear. Call him. Ask him what he thinks. There are people in this church that love Jesus and love you. And somebody comes up with, well, is that true? Talk to one of these guys. Call Sean. He'll, he'll tell you. Talk to people. Talk to your friend that loves Jesus. Don't let the world come in and yap, 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 yap. Because that's what it was doing to the Galatians. It's like, man, you guys are... You've, you've come to Christ. What are you listening to all of this? Ah, oh, Sherry, here you go. What are you listening to all of this lageria? <laughs> all this excess words. Lageria rhymes with, never mind. But all these excess words and useless words. Go back to the scripture. Go back to the very beginning of the scripture, the promise of God, and take it, accept it, let the Holy Spirit use it in your life, and move forward for Jesus Christ. There are people here tonight, you know Jesus, but you've got a little messed up with who you listen to. Don't be listening to these people that are telling these things. You got messed up with who you listen to. You're taking, you're taking wrong counsel. Take counsel from the Word of God being preached. Take counsel from people in the church and friends that know Jesus. And for God, make sure take counsel from God's Word. You've messed up from who you're taking counsel. You're listening to somebody. Now cut it out. Stop listening to people outside of the household of faith. Now you got to vote for somebody, and they, you know you got to pick one. Well, pick one, okay? But I'm talking about we've got spiritual leadership, and listen to that. And if you can't listen to spiritual leadership, you're in the wrong place. Listen to them, talk with them, share with them. There are people all over this church that walk with Jesus. Amen. And they would love to pray with you. They would love to share God's word with you. Right. Get in a small group. We get down to it and really get into it. It's a wonderful thing. Now, there may be somebody here tonight 
you don't know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, if you've not invited him into your life, you're broken by sin. You're locked up in it. And he has said, God has said, I'll fix it through Jesus. And he has provided it. You have to decide whether you're going to open up and let him do the work that he wants to do. And you can do it tonight. You can get it settled. It's broken. I'll fix it. Do you want it? And then Christians, let's watch out who we let yap at us. Let's watch out. Let's listen to the people that have proven themselves to have taught us and loved us and labored over us. Let's be sure that we're hearing God's word and all the things that counsel that's being given. If I'm giving you counsel and you don't hear God's word, stop listening to me. I need to give you God's word rather than quote quote some philosopher somewhere. We need to say, what does God's word say? And not all the yappers. Let's all stand. Bow your heads, please. And If for some reason you have a question, for some reason you're not sure about something, I will be here. Others are around. Don't walk out of the building tonight. Unless you make that, unless you square that up, you could square it up while we pray right now. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us to be careful about who we listen to. I thank you for the promise that you've made and that it can't be changed. It can't be added to because Jesus is more than enough. He's everything. We don't need anything more than him. Pour your grace out over the hearts in this room tonight. That they might be sensitive to the leading of your spirit and the speaking of your word to their heart. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. See this together with the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Alone.